Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to do a full review on the XKX Detect 380 quadcopter drone. Now this guy intrigued me because it's got a nice sleek carbon fiber black look to it and carries a really large battery and the advertised flight time was 30 minutes um, in its naked state. So that really intrigued me and I wanted to do a review on it. This is a review model from GearBest.com. I'll have the links in the description of where to get this if you end up liking it. So let's get started. So of course in the box you get the sleek looking XD Tech 380 and uh, what you'll notice right away is it's got um, 9 inch props, large props. Uh, it's got this carbon fiber finished. It's not real carbon fiber but it's just like a plastic with a carbon fiber paint job. Um, nice looking motors. Really looks pretty well put together. Basically a nice shiny paint job, clear coat finish. Makes it look really attractive. And so in the box with the drone itself you get a nice big 5400 mAh battery pack. 3S 5400 mAh 20C um, battery pack here. You get your LiPo charger plug and lipo charger little bag of allen tool USB cable your wrench for your props and stuff instruction manual a nice color instruction manual it goes through all the controls how to set it up and calibrate everything before you have your first flight so the camera mounts just a basic I took it out of the package already and mounted it but it's just basically a GoPro camera mount which will fit GoPro type cameras uh, with a few vibration dampeners on it and it has some adjustability here where you can kind of tilt it. Um, now this isn't a gimbal this is just a camera mount. Uh, I will be testing with a gimbal uh, in some flight video you'll see soon and so you can kind of see how it differs from how much vibration the regular camera mount has and how much vibration there is with a, a real um, two axis gimbal so we'll be testing that in some video as well and also we get the controller here a pretty basic nice large controller now this this uh, drone has diversity which means it's got two intended antennas for the transmitter and two antennas in the actual drone itself which should give it um, much better range than just a single type of antenna. I did take it apart just to look at what was inside and it looked like you've got one of the diversity antennas, the two of them. One's coming up in here and one's going along the side. So that'll give it that um, that better signal when you are going long range. You notice two, two switches up here. These are all just plugs on the top left, top right, and these here. There's no switches here. They kept this controller really simple because it does have kind of a simple, it is a it is an advanced craft but the modes they put it in are very simple and uh, so the first one you have over here is headlock on the left. Now all this is is when you are hovering you basically it's headless mode so you'd flip that on you can be moving around uh, yawing left to right and also the stick will always come back towards you, go left to right, no matter what your yaw is and the orientation of the craft. So that's good if you get in trouble and you kind of lose what your orientation is. You can always just flip that on and pull the stick back and it'll come right back towards you. And then of course over here it's got the go home switch. This is just the return to home function here. Uh, and once you flip that, it should come home, hover over your home, and then come down and auto land itself unless you flip it back up and interrupt the, the landing. And then of course you've got trim just like any other craft, your roll and pitch trims, and then you've got your yaw and your throttle trims here. I didn't see the need to really use these much but uh, in these more advanced crafts, but just in case it's good to have it there and then this is a mode 1 and a mode 2 um, available stick capable stick uh, controller and if you do like your throttle on the right side you would hold this down and put it into mode 1 
We'll just do that real quick as an example. Just hold down this stick mode and you'll see there it went from mode 2 to mode 1. And if you want to take it back, just hold it and you go back there. And then this button here, take off, when it is on and on the ground, the controller's on and everything, all you should have to do is hold this button down for a couple seconds until the motor starts spinning up and it will take off and supposedly hover six feet above where it took off and just stay there until you're ready to fly it. And then over here you have uh, your gimbal uh, tilt. So basically if you do have a gimbal on there and you plug in to the bottom of the craft signal ports here, uh, you will be able to adjust the, the pitch of your gimbal. So you've got 12 volt power on this one here. You've got a USB jack for data. And then over here you've got your signal pin and positive and negative on this. Now out of the box they didn't label this so it's a little bit uh, confusing to know which is which. If you don't have their proprietary plugs and buy their peripherals uh, you're going to want to be careful on which ones are which and we'll figure that out and go over that later uh, after we fly and um, do the final assessment pros and cons. If you do have a gimbal on there whether it be the one that's made by this company or your own gimbal this would basically uh, pitch up, pitch down, and then depending if you have the function hooked up for your camera, you would just press that button in and it would take a photo. But basically that's it for the controller. It takes six AA batteries. All right, so let's get out and test this guy, see how it does in um, at the park. Come back, kind of give a final assessment, pros and cons, and we'll wrap it up with the final thoughts. Yes, hold is pretty good. Got about 10 to 15 variables. And let's test the speed. Full speed ahead. Turn the home test before we do our range test. Just gonna get it up a little bit and flip the switch. All right, it's coming back. Coming down. All right, pretty spot on. Test. I mean the go home test. Now let's do a range test. Just auto take off. You just hold this button down. There it goes. Looks so like it's hovering about six feet. And let's do a range test. That's 
pretty far. A quarter mile. All right, now it's in GPS lock, way over there. See if we're still in control, yep. Go ahead and do a return to home because I don't want to go any further. Let's see how it does returning from that far away. Okay, so looks like it when it returns to home, it just comes backwards. Whatever orientation you had it in. And then just a note, it looks like you can, um, when it is coming home, you can, when it's coming down, you can move it, reposition it if you want to. Okay, so we're hovering uh, about a hundred or so feet away. And we're going to test the radio failsafe, see if we lose connection or the rail radio gets turned off. See what happens. Should go into return to home. It's coming back. Okay, so we launched from right here, where we launched from. Perfect. Yeah, so that's spot on, so... The um, failsafe is perfect. Return to home is exactly where I took off. And let's see if we can, as soon as we turn the controller on, let's see if we have control again. Oh, we gotta start the motors. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. Yep. So that's good to know. So if you do lose connection or turn your radio off, you can just turn it back on and uh, you have connection, no problem. So we went what looked to be about a mile for range test and I did actually lose control for a while and it went into fail safe and now it's in uh, return to home. Exactly where I took off from.
Hey you guys, welcome back. So as you can see in the video, we went to the park and got some video from a hat cam of it flying and also got some video from this standard GoPro camera mount. And also I took it in my backyard and got some video from this Wakara G2D gimbal and a Sony AS20 action cam. But anyway, getting back to the X380, this guy does the job it's supposed to do. It's not the fastest. It's kind of slow because it always has GPS mode on, but it's very trustable. This thing you can trust, you know, as long as you let that thing lock onto GPS, which it does pretty much immediately when you turn it on. Um, I definitely wait a few minutes, maybe a minute or two when you first turn it on, just to make sure you get that green blinking light and you're good to go. So, um, as you can see in the video, the Return to home was spot on. Everything worked flawlessly. Uh, very steady hover when you just let off the sticks. The good thing about this controller, which might be a pro or con, and depending on who you ask, is it has a spring in the left throttle. So it's really easy to just let the whole thing off. And I kind of like it because it just locks into the position and just stays there. So it's going to be really hard for anybody to crash this thing. I'd really recommend this if somebody's getting into these kind of larger smart GPS type quads. This would be a great starter to, you know, not have to worry about crashing due to pilot errors so much since it is always in GPS mode. Again, as long as you let it lock onto GPS, you should be fine. Um, I could see there might be an instance where you just plugged it in and started flying right away and it didn't lock its home position correctly and if you did try to go into the go home you know without a good um, lock where it left from then you might have problems like it flying away or something but so as long as you you know do your basic homework and are make sure you just make sure that you do um, you know real basic pilot uh, flight pre-checks just make sure the props are on tight and the GPS gets that lock there's really no way you can crash this thing unless you're holding the uh, throttle down all the way and you don't stop before you hit the ground so I really like that feature real fail safe uh, what I did notice kind of a con was the camera mount was pretty shaky there was a lot of uh, shake and jello in the video with its stock camera mount that's kind of the norm for these types of just stock real cheap kind of camera mounts so if you really want to get decent video I'd recommend investing in something like this this is the Wakara G2D gimbal um, I think you can get it online for like 60 to 70 bucks there's a lot of other options out there as far as gimbals go when you do put a gim gimbal on like this depending on which gimbal you get and how far out it is uh, you are going to get also depending on how wide of an angle your camera is you are going to get some the legs in the the video as you saw with the video of the sony action cam mounted up uh, at the park it was about 10 to 15 mile per hour winds did really well in the winds at the park uh, no problems there um, at my house when I had the gimbal the gimbal mounted up uh, it was really windy as you could see the trees just blowing around it must have been like 20 to 30 miles per hour gusting uh, even pro possibly more and um, surprisingly the X380 actually held its own in that wind I was able to fly around and I was able to hover with all sticks off all controls let go and it was able to fight the wind and stay in its position really well so I don't think I was kind of worried about the its ability its speed and stuff with the GPS I was kind of worried about its ability to fight the wind but it seems like it's not a problem now I wouldn't take it out in 20 plus mile per hour winds if at all possible but if you did hit some gusts it seems like it'll be able to get out of a sticky situation pretty easily now this is completely stock setup. I haven't I haven't uh, balanced rotors. I haven't you know tried any other rotors. Really, the only thing I've done is tried a different gimbal and camera. And I did hook it up to to these ports on the bottom here. And just since they're not marked, I'm going to go ahead and 
tell you what they are. Now they're also not marked in the manual, so this might help you out. On the right side, you got a 12 volt negative, 12 volt positive, and then you've got a 5 volt negative, 5 volt positive, and then this is your signal pin. So it looks like it's only got a signal pin for the. Probably going to want to use that for your um, your tilt on your your camera. And then the USB port, there was no literature whatsoever in the manual about the USB port and about what you can do with it. So I'm going to be releasing another few videos and I'm going to try to mod this thing to the fullest. I'm going to try to mod it for some long range uh, FPV and stuff like that and see how I can do it. So I'll be coming back with another video on mods and uh, how useful this port is here. Flight times with the battery power, I was really impressed with the flight times. Uh, with that 5400 mAh battery, with the quad naked with no camera on it whatsoever, I was able to get the 30 minutes as advertised. Uh, that's really impressive, 30 minutes, and that's not just hovering, that's flying around, going up and down, and uh, just having fun with it. And then with this Sony uh, camera and this gimbal, I was able to get about 20 to 22 minutes or maybe 21 minutes around there uh, and that's just because of the added weight now this was when it was really windy at my house I did test that time so that's in high winds with the gimbal with the camera uh, the gimbal plugged in and powered by the craft so 21 minutes that's pretty darn good for how windy it was now with this camera on there and with a stock camera mount, I was able to get about 25 minutes, maybe 26, 25, 26 minutes. And that's just because it's a little lighter, it doesn't have a gimbal, the mount's really light. And this camera is just a little bit lighter than the Sony Action Cam. All right guys, so that's been a full initial review of the XKX380 quadcopter drone. And in a final word, uh, very impressed. This thing does a great job at what it's supposed to do. Again, I said that before. And you have some mounting options. You can mount a gimbal. There are some proprietary peripherals you can hook up, which I don't have on this model. This is just the plain model with no camera, no gimbal, and no other um, accessories. But for what I got here and just the out-of-the-box full review of everything stock, it is a really good quadcopter. So I'd highly recommend this one. If you are interested in this, or this is a GearBest review model, and you can go check the link in the description to get yours. Um, I will be coming back. Don't forget, I will be coming back with a full mod review on this, and I'm going to push it to its limits and see what it can do. So stay tuned for that. And anyway, um, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment for more videos like this. I do a lot of tech videos and RC videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.